Um, today marks 20 years since the opening of the Ogden Center for Fundamental Physics, and we're celebrating our anniversary with a whole range of activities, first and foremost by welcoming Sir Peter Ogden, whose generosity has made possible the infrastructure upon which the center relies. So Peter uh, has been instrumental in our having two wonderful buildings that uh, house the center, and these buildings provide the physical and intellectual environment required for our research to flourish. Uh, welcome, uh, Peter, and I'm, I'm very pleased that you're here helping us celebrate 20 years of achievement, 20 years of success in fundamental physics. Thank you, Carlos. The, uh, we're sitting in your office here in the Ogden Center. So what do you think we've achieved in fundamental physics through the center? The establishment of the center was truly transformational. It completely changed the way we do fundamental physics at Durham, and it has had repercussions be beyond Durham. Before you came into the scene, and I remember very well the first day, first day I met you, when you said to me, all the stuff you're doing is really good. How can I help? How can I make it happen better and faster? I remember that day so well. Now that day was transformational because it turned what was a collection of small pockets of very outstanding and uh, creative physicists into a coherent activity. So when the first building uh, was built, we for the first time came together and having a shared environment where you meet people continuously is the essence of how we do science today. So I would say the Ogden Center has transformed the way we do particle physics, cosmology and astronomy in Durham and we were propelled into one of the top uh, groups in the world and of course through that we have been in, able to influence uh, the progress of physics throughout the world. Okay, so what is the most uh, important achievement or discovery that, that's been made in both the, from the, both the Ogden Center number one and the new building? What is the real one thing that really makes you proud of what we've built here? Well, there are several. There's not just one, but let me just mention a couple of those. So in cosmology, we have together with our international partners, of course, and we're not the only people in the world doing this, but we have essentially transformed the methodology of doing physics research in cosmology, because we have helped develop the technique of computer simulations, where you bring the amazing power of computers to help you solve the equations of physics that otherwise you could not solve, and therefore recreate the whole history of the universe from the Big Bang to the present. So from the point of view of techniques, that was, was made possible again by having a center which, uh, because the center was here, allowed us to attract quite substantial funds to get some of the largest supercomputers in the country, which are dedicated just to the study of the universe. Now, from the point of view of content, that's just a technique, what I think we have achieved over the last 20 years is to refine and develop fully what is now the standard model of cosmology. This is slightly strange model if you hear about it for the first time. <laughs> it has dark matter and it has dark energy, but we have developed that to the extent that it has become a testable prediction of physics. So that's from the point of view of cosmology. Now from the point of view of particle physics, everybody knows about the discovery of the Higgs boson. Uh, it was in the news and, um, um, and rightly so. Well, the Institute for Particle Physics Phenomenology, part of the um, Ogden Center, they were crucial in preparing for the discovery of the Higgs by telling people in the laboratory, in CERN, what they should be looking for, what signals the Higgs would have, and how to interpret the data. So I think uh, for, from the point of view of particle physics, that's of course a major breakthrough. So I would say those are the two things we feel, or I do feel most proud of. By facilitating very high level research in particle physics and cosmology in Durham, we of course had also an international impact because our research is not just local, our research reaches physicists across the world, science is an international endeavor. So I feel very proud that we have been able to influence the, some of the main strands of scientific research in physics, not just in Durham, not just in the UK, 
not just in Europe, but across the world. The vision of the Ogden Trust today is focused on physics, supporting physics teaching and physics learning. Well, why do you think that is so important today? Physics has become quite a difficult subject for students at A-level. And uh, if you don't have students at A-level, you don't have people going to university to do physics. If they don't go to university, you don't have teachers. And it's a self-fulfilling problem. And physics has been regarded as a hard subject. I think the, most things have started to change with the work that we've done, the things that Brian Cox has done, uh, and the idea that sometimes students like to do difficult subjects. So we have seen a resurgence in physics learning. Physics is kind of, it's very hard when people say, physics, why do you want to do physics? You know, you just have to point them to your mobile phone, your telephone, your TV, and try and explain to them that none of the things that we use, the internet, none of this would have been possible without physics people. And I think we get over the barrier which says it's a very hard subject to do, then I think, you know, the fact is that students will go more to physics because it is fundamental to most of our lives. Uh, thank you, Peter. That, that's something I've always admired in you. So, of course, you, you, you're a physicist. You were an undergrad in Durham, a PhD student in Durham. You decided to become a businessman and a very successful yeah. one at that. But what I've always admired about you is that uh, you are a scientist in businessman's clothes. Yeah, I think your heart still <laughs> in science. You retain that uh, uh, curiosity and that desire to learn and to understand. And that, I think is why um, your influence extends just beyond the material gifts that you've given us. You've also given us tremendous inspiration. Thanks very much. I mean, I'm going off script now. The, uh, <laughs> it is always interesting. I have a, on my wall uh, uh, two things. One is, which is, may not be true, it's supposed that Albert Einstein said he would, uh, if he hadn't been a physicist, he would have been a trader because business is a noble art. So that's a lead in. And secondly, <laughs> I think that the, uh, you know, it, it is a f question that you deal with every day. Why do we live in this universe? How is it formed and, and what is its future? And I think these have to be questions that anybody would find interesting. I completely agree with you. <laughs> so it will take a while before we can answer those questions in a, in a, in a compelling way. But uh, those are questions that drive physics, but also drive human curiosity. And so that's why I think physics really lies at the root of our civilization and at the root of us, of our humanity, uh, of, of being the way we are as humans. We have this curiosity to understand our environment, and there's no bigger environment than the universe as a whole. And finally, Carlos, what do you think the future of the Ogden Center will be? Well, looking at the past 20 years, um, it's been a tremendous um, journey. We started off really from scratch, from almost zero. I mean, the first building uh, it gave us this vibe, and we knew we were onto something good. Now, we have still been developing, growing immensely. Uh, this year, for example, we just got a large research grant from the, from the uh, funding agency in the UK. And just in astronomy and cosmology, we're going to hire 50 new young scientists to come here to do research. So, um, so that's one aspect of it. The other aspect is that uh, the institute and the center are immensely international. So this is one science is one of those activities where really there are no borders, and um, and we are a microcosmos of that international nature. We recruit the best people in the world. And we do that because they come to use the facilities that we have here. So we have had a period of growth, a period of, um, I wouldn't call it consolidation, we continue growing. But when I look into the future, what, what we really need to do is to establish the Open Center for Fundamental Physics as a, an activity looking over the horizon, not of 10, 20 years, but 50, 100 years. And for that, we really need to establish security of funding for our young researchers. So uh, what I'm hoping for the future is that we will be able, like other places um, in, in other countries have, to have an endowment that would allow the center uh, to um, continue developing 
into the unlimited future. So that, that's what I'm hoping for the future. Right, so in, in spite of undoubtedly tremendous progress in cosmology and particle physics over the last not just 20, 30, 40, 50 years, uh, paradoxically, we are at the verge of answering some very fundamental questions that we have refined, we understand what they are, but we don't have answers for. Then these are encapsulated in what we call the five Ogden questions, the questions that you said to us 20 years ago when the center was founded. And I have to confess, slightly, in an, um, slightly embarrassed, that we haven't answered any of your five questions. They were really hard. Hard but questions. The questions are really fundamental. What is the dark matter? We know it's there, we don't know what it is. What is the dark energy? We know the dark energy is causing our universe to expand uh, at an accelerated rate. We have no idea of what it is. What are the fundamental particles, the nature of fundamental particles? We have this wonderful standard model of particle physics, but we know it's incomplete because it doesn't include dark matter. And uh, there's this famous particles called neutrinos, neutrinos yeah. which we now have, not have the mass, but have a mass, but according to the standard model, we have zero mass. Um, and then the other, the fifth of the question, which to me is fascinating, is are we alone in the universe? Are we the only thinking technological society in the universe? I don't know the answer to any of these questions. So these are questions that will no doubt keep our successors busy for many years to come. I think the, from a personal point of view, not at the, level, at the forefront of this, but it, it would appear that there is a chance, certainly in my lifetime, that dark matter will be solved. Do you agree? I completely agree with you. And uh, the, the only thing that worries me is that um, I think dark matter will be discovered within the next five years. But what worries me is I've been saying that for the last 20. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I do think, I think, I hope, I hope keeping my fingers crossed, I think we now know exactly, we've refined now the, the experimental techniques. Uh, we know exactly what we're looking for. And you think something should come out of that effort. I mean, people sometimes get impatient in physics, but the Higgs boson itself, it was 40 years 40 after years, it yeah. was uh, predicted, uh, before it was discovered. And the, the same thing might happen with dark matter. My, my biggest uh, nightmare, uh, and I have woken up in the middle of the night with this thought, what if the particle just doesn't interact with anything and it really, really is invisible? Mm -hmm. that, would be, that would be very bad news. But astronomers are a fountain of ingenuity and they come up with all sorts of methods to, to indirectly infer the particle physics nature of the dark matter. So that's plan B, of course. Plan A is for somebody to come and say, here, I've got a particle of dark matter in my experiment. Uh, you can enjoy the day. Uh, later this morning, we're going to uh, open up a new sculpture, and it's called A Journey. And, you know, my relationship with the Durham physics uh, has been uh, an incredible journey. And for me, very, very, very rewarding. So, to be honest with you, I wish the future will be as good as the past, because it's really been most rewarding. Thank you, Carlos. Well, I, it's uh, me who should be thanking you, Peter, because... Um, you really have made a lasting impression. I remember when I met you, uh, and I said, Peter, why are you giving us all this money? And he says, because I want to make a difference, because I want to give something back. And, um, and that's been with me all my career, well, since I met you, the last part of my career. How do you make a difference? How do you give something back? And um, I think you've taught me many, many things. Of course, it's thanks to you and your generosity that um, the careers of many of my colleagues and mine have flourished. Without your support, we wouldn't be where we are. So looking towards the future, well, your legacy will be there. I think uh, when we're gone from this world, what um, you have done for Durham Physics will still be remembered. Right. And so uh, for the future, I just, like you, hope for more, more uh, not of the same, because science is never the same, but for more challenges, more hard questions to tackle, and more exciting discoveries to be made.